One of the things the EV haters love to shout about is the problem of battery fires. EVs catch fire all of the time, they say. It's something I get in the comments on a regular basis. But is it really a problem? Why have EVs not been banned on safety grounds? Could there be a government conspiracy, a cover-up? What's the reality? Let's find out today. As you can see, I have both of my cars with me today. This is my 2022 Renault Zoe ZE50, an electric car. And this is my 1999 Smart 42, which the family nicknamed Candy. The Renault Zoe uses an electric motor to power it forward, using electricity released from a chemical reaction in the battery. This is an extremely efficient process and generates very little waste heat. The temperatures of the components in an EV are naturally not very high, but they are kept to no more than about 50 degrees Celsius by a low pressure cooling system. The battery suffers more degradation if it is allowed to get much above this temperature. Degradation, remember, is a slow reduction in the total releasable energy capacity of the battery. So we can minimize degradation by managing the temperature of the battery. This is most important when using very high power, such as high speed or rapid acceleration, or when rapid charging. The motor is also cooled, as high temperatures in the motor could damage any magnets it contains, as well as increasing resistance, reducing efficiency. Candy, on the other hand, has a small turbocharged petrol engine. A petrol engine uses heat as part of its method of operation. It is burning the fuel and having it expand that generates the motive force. The burning of the fuel in the engine causes its extremely high temperatures, something like 1200 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to melt most of the engine if it isn't cooled. That's why a combustion engine car needs a high pressure cooling system it needs to move a lot of heat away from the engine very quickly. And the coolant would boil and be unable to move that heat quickly enough if the system were not pressurized. One could say that an internal combustion engine car runs on fire. That's almost exactly correct. Many, many parts in the engine bay get extremely hot and all of that heat makes for a significant fire risk. There's a thing called the fire triangle that is used to explain how fire happens. And that shows there are three items needed for fire. Fuel, oxygen and heat. An ice vehicle has heat in abundance. And all of that heat causes an increased risk of fire outside of the engine rather than just inside. If anything combustible gets into contact with anything hot, a fire can break out very easily. An ice car is intentionally designed to minimise the amount of combustible material that is present in the engine bay. But things can go wrong, and if they do, then a fire can break out. Once it's lit, a fire will get out of control very quickly. Ice cars are a greater risk than EVs. There is much more opportunity for a fire to break out because of the way they work. Engineers have done extremely well to minimise the risk of fire in ice cars, but they remain a risk. It's just a risk that we have come to accept. But enough theory, these things exist in the real world, so we should be able to gather data on just how often each catches fire. Let's have a look at that. I've managed to find some information that tells us what is happening. Links to the sources of information are in the video description if you'd like to look for yourselves. An organisation called the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency released a study of their findings in May 2023. That took data about vehicle files from the period 2018 to 2022 and compared the number of ice fires they experienced versus EV fires. Their data indicated that EVs were 20 times less likely to catch fire than ICE cars. 
Let me say that again, 20 times less likely. Not 20% less likely, but 20 times less likely. But wait, I hear you exclaim, there are fewer EVs on the road than there are ICE vehicles, so of course there are fewer EV fires. Well no, they've taken that into account. Their fitters are already corrected for the number of cars of each type. So this is not to do with how many EVs there are at the moment. It's a well considered study. However, we do need to be slightly careful. As far as I can see, their figures do not seem to be corrected for vehicle age. At the moment, EVs are, on average, newer than ICE cars, just because they haven't been sold in large enough numbers for very long. I wonder if a car becomes more likely to catch fire as it gets older. I don't have any evidence of that, but it seems reasonable that older cars are more likely to suffer a fault as parts wear or age. I think we may see the exact figures on EV fires rise a bit as the ages of the fleet reach parity. But it's unlikely that BEV figures will come near figures for ICE cars, just because of the way an ICE car works, as we've already discussed. And this data fits with high profile fires that have been reported in the UK. In the past few years, we've had two car parks that have been destroyed by fire. The first was on New Year's Eve 2017, when a car park near Liverpool's Echo Arena caught fire. Around 1,300 vehicles were destroyed, and the car park was so badly damaged that it had to be demolished. Photos and CCTV indicate that the fire started in the engine bay of a Range Rover. Then, on the 10th of October 2023, a fire broke out at a car park at Luton Airport. Whilst the media were quick to blame it on EVs, video footage was released showing it to be a diesel Range Rover, another Range Rover. That car park was completely destroyed by the fire. Now it's possible this same problem could be caused by an EV in the future, but as we've said, it's much less likely. And that's not all. There's a bit more to this story. What the EV haters are spreading fear about is not just EV fires, which is what we've been talking about to this point, but EV battery fires. After all, if a large lithium ion battery pack catches fire, it's very difficult to put out. That's partially because the pack is more or less sealed to protect it, and it traps heat within the casing as it burns, which causes a chain reaction that impacts other cells in the pack. So if battery fires are actually the concern, what we really need to know is how often they occur. Does the pack catch a light in all circumstances, as the haters would have us believe? There's an Australian non-profit organisation called EV Firesafe, who have been compiling information on that very subject. EV Firesafe collect data to help inform fire service personnel to ensure they understand this relatively modern type of fire. EV Firesafe gather data from any source they can find. Some comes direct from the fire services in countries with which they have an agreement. Others are done by investigating the story behind reports they find in the media, using all of the detail they can obtain. They investigate whether the fire involved the battery pack and categorise the circumstances in which it took hold, amongst other things. EV Firesafe releases summaries of their data every once in a while, and we can look at the last set of data they made available to us. That last release covered all EV battery fires worldwide from 2010 to June 2023. Okay, so how many EV battery fires do you think there have been? To give us an idea of the possible scale of the problem, by June 2023, there would have been roughly 30 million EVs on the world's roads. So if there are 30 million vehicles, how many battery fires might there have been? What do you think? 30,000? 10,000? Maybe 5,000? 
Well, if you think any of those, you're a little bit high. The total number, including all cases, that's all verified cases, plus unverified but suspected cases from trusted sources, and all of those still being investigated, which may or may not involve battery fires, was, wait for it, 488. Yep, 488 in 13 and a half years. Let's say that one more time. A total of 488 fires involving the battery in a fleet of 30 million cars across 13 and a half years. So maybe not quite as prevalent as people might have us believe then. Of course that data is nine months old at this point, so this number will be out of date by now. But based on the evidence so far, we can perhaps imagine that it won't have increased dramatically all of a sudden. Now having said all of this, there are a couple of troubling trends that we need to look at. First, the data is showing that hybrids are the most likely of cars to catch fire, even more than ICE cars, and certainly a lot more likely than EVs. Now I don't know why that might be, but a hybrid car has two drivetrains. I wonder if each drivetrain brings its own risks, and squeezing them both into a single car might be tricky as well. However, the likelihood of a fire in a hybrid seems much higher than the sum of the two risks alone. So there's something not quite right with hybrids that we need to identify and resolve. And this isn't comforting news when a lot of people seem to be wondering whether a hybrid might be their next step. That's something to consider if you are thinking that way. The risk of a hybrid fire seems to be about double that of an ICE car and that makes it 40 times higher than an EV. The second worrying trend is that personal mobility devices seem to be much more at risk of catching fire than electric cars. That's things like hoverboards, powered micro scooters and even some electric bikes. These are risky not only because they might be very cheaply mass produced, perhaps with limited quality control in some instances, but also because they are often charged indoors and sometimes in hallways and entranceways, thereby blocking people's ability to escape past them if there is a fire. So if you buy a personal electric mobility device of any sort, either for yourself or for your children, then I would recommend you buy from a brand with a good reputation. Choosing solely based on cost probably isn't the best approach. Now whatever we do, the EV haters are going to hate, but their fear-mongering is totally misplaced. Electric cars do not pose a significant fire risk. Once you know the figures, you realise how ridiculous an argument this actually is. Indeed, an EV-only fleet is likely to pose significantly less of a fire risk than that of an ICE fleet. And the final nail in the coffin of this particular myth, of course, is this, the mobile phone. This contains a lithium-ion battery, and one that is pushed to the limits of its capability. We want our mobile phones to be on for a long time, and to charge really quickly when they do run flat, so they are designed without the care and attention that is lavished upon EV batteries. They are built using the most energy dense of all of the chemistries available, making them a bit more flammable than EV batteries, and then we charge them very fast with no thermal management. On a daily basis, you carry it in your pocket right next to your body, and you probably recharge it next to your bed at night as well. Even so, you have lived to tell a tale. If, despite hearing the statistics in this video, you are still concerned about EV battery fires, then maybe you should reconsider how you use and store your mobile phone, and your laptop or tablet, and your Bluetooth earbuds, and any vapes you use, whether rechargeable or disposable. These all contain lithium-ion batteries, and surely if any one is a risk, 
then you should consider that they all are. You can't have it both ways. OK, that's it for this subject. But before I go, just a quick note to say that I'll be wandering the stands at the Everything Electric show in London next week. If you are also going and you see me there, why not come and say hello? It will be great to meet you. Thanks very much for joining me. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. I imagine this to be a very exciting conversation in the comments this week. If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed it, and YouTube may promote it to others based upon that. And of course, click subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks.